welcome back in today's video we have another submission from Anumanu and it's about potion battle so let's see what we can do about it first thing I would like to say is nice work the potion looks really nice and especially if you have based it off the potion that I've shown in the course in the beginner section this one looks way more rendered so nice work so here we have the animation that Anumanu submitted you can see that the potion is changing colors as well as moving up and down Overall, it's totally fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it. I would just like to point out that usually when we animate an object like Potion, which has glass and it has reflections, we would usually keep those reflections the same. So you can see that the value of the highlights on the Potion bottle become a lot darker. This is something that could happen if, the, if suddenly the Potion is in the dark and maybe that's what's happening here. But if not, I would consider this to keep basically on the lighter side essentially the same color of the highlight should like stay the same and also on one of these let's say one two three yeah when the potion is completely on the let's say upper portion of the sprite canvas you can see that you are introducing a new color here it's barely visible but it's uh, still there so i would suggest removing that just to keep the lighting consistent or the shading consistent what i have done is isolated the first frame downscale it because this was an upscaled image by a double i'm only gonna work on the first frame and base my feedback upon this first frame so the tips will be a bit more general okay so the first tip would be backgrounds right now we have no background whatsoever and that's not necessarily bad especially if you're gonna use sprite in the game so there's nothing wrong with it but if you are showcasing your portion let's say on social media it's nice to have the background second tip i would give you is how to choose what kind of background to put for your object usually if you have the outline shaded outline like in this case would be the glass i would say look where the values are on the color wheel or the color palette picker so let's see we have all of these gray tones which is actually the glass and you can see all of those and even i would say the whole bottle itself is usually on the upper half of the color picker tool so let's see, let's go around and you can see the red ones are on the upper portion. The glass is also as well. And we have even these. Everything is on the upper portion. So that means we want to aim at the opposite side of the value spectrum. Meaning when something is light or dark, we want to switch it around when it comes to the background. So if the object is bright, like this object is, we want our background to be darker. And vice versa so since the potion is bright i want my background to be very dark so in order to keep it simple i'm just gonna place it completely black there we go so now we have our potion bottle which stands quite a bit more nicely especially for viewers on this video so they can see a bit, a bit better so in contrast if i were to keep it bright for example something like this you can see that you are losing some of the details on the glass on the outer side of the potion bottle that's why we want to keep the values usually in check by checking where exactly is the value of the potion bottle and what is going to be our background color let's talk about the third tip the colors i think there are just a little bit too many of those you can see that the gray tones are like we have six of those or maybe seven let me reorganize it just slightly okay there we go so we have seven tones of the glass we don't need as much maybe three or four would do just fine so let's try to see in which one we can combine so i'm going to place these three tones which are the darkest so let's say these two and i'm just going to keep one of them so you can see how they're very close especially these two but i'll keep them all in this shadow tone so i'm going to replace it on this entire image and there we go so now we can remove these two from the color palette as well and we can do the same thing for these two mid tones so we are just going to place one of those like that and simply replace the other like that okay so now that we have less tones to work with it's going to be a bit easier to animate we can do the similar thing for the liquid inside the potion bottle you can see that we have five colors so let's reorganize those as well a little bit there we go so we have the brightest on here and when i place it i see only one pixel on this entire canvas usually for single pixels on this type of object based illustration let's say it's not worth it so we can just remove it and we have also stayed up on our space of the color palette now that we have reduced our color palette a little bit now we can talk about how to create colors themselves for the color palette there's one thing that we should keep in mind and that's 
curvatures on the color wheel and as well on the color picker tool what does that mean well when it comes to color wheel it's hue shifting i do see that in some places you are hue shifting for example between these two tones on some of these you are not hue shifting so if i open up my color picker here and go to hue saturation value and place it like that now if we look at the hue you can see it stays the same we want to hue shift our colors because that's the way we are showcasing that there is color to the light that is hitting the object so for example if the blue light is hitting our object we are going to hue shift our light tones towards the blue tone same goes for the sunlight if it's like a bright day we want to hue shift our colors towards the yellow because well that's the color of the sun it's going to be a bit different at the, at the dusk and dawn but you get the point so what i want to do is hue shift all of these colors so let's start with with this mid tone it's here okay so we have the brightest tone here i'm just gonna hue shift it ever so slightly towards the yellow color and then i'm going to hue shift this color a bit towards the red tone because the red tone is going to be closer to the blue one it, you're essentially going in the opposite direction for the shadows than you have used for the brighter tone like the light tone so if from the mid tone towards the light you are going let's say on the right side which you have done then go towards the left side for the shadows and then we have lastly this one which is totally fine when it comes to hue shifting so that's important one the second tip when it comes to picking colors is the curvature on the color wheel itself so if we'll take a look at the colors of the bottle cap look where exactly is the position of this uh, specific pointer so here we have the brightest tone we have the mid tone so it moves a bit down to the left then the shadow moves a bit to the right down and then lastly this one even stays completely the same so and it's essentially only hue shifting so that's really not uh, the best idea you can see it's zigzagging from right to left to right and then it stays the same usually uh, in cases like this i would see probably a little bit to the left as well we are essentially having this on the color picker so we are zigzagging so you're zigzagging when you're picking colors so if you take a look at the red tones you can see that you have a curvature which goes a little bit like this so it goes ever so slightly like that which is good and that's the principle that you should apply on everywhere so when you're picking a specific color let's say brown colors and you want to shade it you want light tones and shadow tones just pick a curve it can be from the top left to bottom right so you can same thing it goes here so you can see that it goes to the right and then down it falls down that's totally fine same thing would be done here you don't want to zigzag when you are moving from light to shadow so keeping that in mind I'm going to take this light tone and I'm going to follow the same curve that you have used for the red tone. So I'm going to start on the top left side. This is going to be my light tone. And then when I go to mid tone, I'm just gonna fall down slightly to the right. And do the same thing for the rest of these. So now if you look here on the color picker tool, look how it falls down. My bad. Do you see how it falls down? Instead of using the old ones, like here, instead of zigzagging, you can see how it falls down nicely. That's what we, what we want to achieve when we are usually creating colors. Now, this isn't the only curve that you can use from the top left to the bottom right. It can go in the opposite direction and inversely. So you can experiment as you want with those. The next tip I would like to offer you is where exactly is the position of the light source. When we see the light where exactly is hitting this portion, we would say it's on the left side. Usually for rounded objects, we want to keep the light source a bit closer to the viewer's eyes. So for example, if this is, let's say, the rounded object and we are here, we want our light source to be a bit to the left or a bit to the right. We don't want it to be directed to the left, like in this case, like over here, because the rounded object loses a little bit of its shape it's not a big deal but it's certainly something to keep in mind so i'm just gonna do exactly that so i'm going to shift this tone a bit to the right so it matches this highlight below and i'm going to speed this one up
okay so here we go now i have cleaned up the bottle cap so because you are using a bit noisy style when it comes to your potion and by noisy i mean a lot of uh, checkerboard patterns everywhere i'm going to use the same thing here on the potion bottle cap so i'll just introduce that to match your style a bit more okay there we go so i think it matches your style a bit more nicely now now when it comes to the shading of the glass itself now we have to match it as well because the light is currently on the left we're going to try to keep it simple so first things first i'm just going to take one giant tone and shade everything except the highlights i'm going to leave those where they were so let's think about this the light is hitting here so we can match our highlights directly here exactly where the cap is now reflections are something a bit different so you know uh, highlights where exactly they are hitting and what exactly is the light tone is a bit different but nonetheless to keep it simple let's play it like that so next we have the shadow tone we can start using the shadow tone here exactly where the shadows are starting like that so it's starting roughly here and then we have the darkest tone again which we can start exactly where the darkest tones are we want a bit of the shadow below the main cap so you can see how it creates this little nice depth like it has uh, some extra depth to it so we want to keep it like that and we also want to make it like so now i will do the same thing on the rest of the bottle so the entire right side portion of the bottle is going to be in the shadow same goes for the bottom and this left side can be in the light so it we have at least some contrast and since you have placed something here, like a reflection, perhaps I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe just this would be enough. And maybe a little bit of highlight tones here as well. So we have moved our shading to match the position of the highlights just a bit more nicely. It's not necessary, but I think for rounded objects, this is really nice. And for the last tip of the day is thickness of the glass itself. Now, there's just... A little nice trick that I found in the past that I have used and that's do you see where the glass and the liquid of the bottle of the potion connect we can simply erase one pixel like so and this is going to give some extra depth or extra thickness to the glass of our portion you can mess around a little bit more with the shading of the liquid and so on but i don't think it's really necessary you have did a great job when it comes to the potion itself to conclude this is the before and this is the after i hope these few tips help you level up your game when it comes to potions maybe you even become an alchemist one day who knows that's all for today thank you for submission on Manu. and as always enjoy the process relax and have fun.